Hey guys, yeah, we're sitting outside of uh, WestJet Cargo again. We just picked up uh, two rather large boxes. Now in those boxes, there's a couple of uh, things that are ultra spicy. Uh, one particular very spicy. And uh, some supplies we've been waiting on uh, the desperately to be able to continue some of the massive projects and builds that are ongoing. So I'm pretty excited to get these boxes home. See what we got. See you in a bit. All right, well, we're back home. It's time to get into these boxes. Find out what we've got here. Now, one box, this box here, I already know what's in it. Well, actually, I know it's in both boxes because I ordered it, but I know what's in this box, and there's a reason I'm standing back here with these things here. You guys have probably been wondering what's been happening with Toke Palace. Stuff is in here, some of the parts that we need to be able to finish Toke Palace, and stuff that's in here is also part of this project here as well. So finally, I've been waiting on this stuff for a few weeks. We can finally get back to business and start finishing up some of these projects. But there are also some critters, not many, but a couple of critters for the lair. And uh, as I mentioned, one of them, actually both of them are pretty spicy. Now, when I talk about spicy, I don't mean it jokingly. It's, it's a term that I, I've always known as, I've always kind of used it, but I refer to spicy as, as things that are venomous. And then as spicy, bad spicy could be like a black mamba. Uh, and then you work your way down as to, you know, like a jalapeno pepper, you know, it's not really that spicy. That would be something like getting bit by, uh, like most of the New World spiders or something. But uh, when you get into the Old World, some of them get pretty spicy. And uh, this one in particular, uh, the one of the ones in particular here, is probably one of the spiciest. Now you guys are probably already guessing what it's going to be. You're probably thinking, oh, it's going to be a Pasilliathera or something like that. You're going to be wrong. It's a really, really cool species. I've been wanting to pick one up for a while. And uh, my contact over at my good friends over at Port Credit Pets, uh, Erica was able to hook me up. She found a nice sexed one and just freshly molted. So I'm pretty excited to see what she sent me today. What could be in this little box of danger today, you might wonder? Well, one of them came from one of Canada's top breeders of tarantulas and her name is Ann Mack. Always open the box to you so you can see if they're going to come lunging out at you and bite you in the face. Heating pack is still warm. Two absolute beauties. One here and one here. They are both adult females. One of them, see if we can figure out which one is which. This one here is the formerly Seriopagopus, now Haplopelma. This is Dorier. This is now Haplopelma Dorier. Now the, the really unique thing about this particular species, and it's going to be challenging for me to get you any photos or a video of it right away. We'll see how the rehousing goes to get it set up. But uh, this is an old world species from Sumatra and uh, it's known to be absolutely volatile for venom. So I call this one an extremely spicy tarantula. This is one that I definitely do not want to get tagged by. Uh, being one that has had uh, heart issues and stuff in the past, this species has been known to cause uh, heart issues for people that do suffer a bite from it. So this one we definitely have to take a little bit more respect. Not that we don't respect all the species we work with, but this one in particular we're going to have to be very, very respectful of. And then this one is the one that would have come from Anne. And this one is Kiliobrachis species Electric Blue. Uh, if you guys have ever seen pictures, this, this thing is absolutely breathtaking. And she is awesome. She's webbed her entire uh, enclosure up, right up to the lid and everything like that. She's in true form. She's already webbed in her bowl. So I'm pretty excited about this one. So you can see it from Mac Tarantulas. You can follow her page. I'll put the link in the description. She is absolutely an exceptional breeder. So this is a gorgeous female. So I guess we're going to have to get them set up. All right. So I have to kind of go uh, outside of my norm today. This bucket that you see everything in that's got all my media, 
This is actually the bucket that I normally use for when I go and do rehousing of any of the really spicy tarantulas, and it's usually kept empty. But today, because I was doing a bunch of run around, we had to get some substrate ready. This was the quickest enclosure to go and do the substrate. So I've gone ahead. Uh, this is not going to be a permanent setup. Uh, I always never, I really never have any idea how big they're going to be when they come. They always say a certain size, but you know, you, you kind of look at it and kind of wonder if it's going to be big enough. Uh, I, I want to get it into a bigger enclosure, but you know me, I'm going to want to build an enclosure. So temporary setup, this is going to be just fine. It's a semi-fossorial, or it is a fossorial species, so it's going to probably want to be buried most of the time. So I've taken a nice piece of bark, and this piece of bark goes all the way to the end here. And I've cleared it out underneath, and it's rigid, it's held up. And then I've gone and filled it with the same sort of substrate mix, which you guys have seen, and that I've made for almost all my isopods and all my bavariums. It's very loose, airy mix but it retains moisture very, very well. Something that you would find on the forest floor. Uh, reverse osmosis water, or distilled water, and I've overflowed it a little bit in this corner so it has gone and, and filled it up. Now, this species is extremely fast. It's known to be extremely defensive, and as mentioned, incredibly spicy. So we're gonna go ahead and try and do this. This is uh, sometimes called the Borneo orange fringe tarantula. I don't even know how we're going to get it out of here. Oh, let's do it right against our chest. That sounds like a great idea. So let's see what she looks like. See if she's going to cooperate with us today. But there she be. Look at those nice, thick pedip alps. You can see that orange seam. She is absolutely stunning. So we're going to go and transfer into the transfer cup just to make it easy, less stressful for me, less stressful on her. Oh, my bottle was, the bottom of my bottle here was catching on the lip of it. I was wondering what was going on. Move that out of the way. But she is striking. I know you probably can't see very well what she looks like through the bottle. Let's see if we can get her into her new enclosure. She went down on her own, didn't have to even open it up. She is stunning. Now we know it's a female. I wouldn't say she's fully, fully transformed into her full adult female colors. But she is starting to look absolutely gorgeous. Can you say that about a tarantula? Well, I think she's gorgeous. What are your thoughts? Now, the second one, as mentioned, was Achilliobrachis species electric blue. It's a very, very known worldwide uh, tarantula that has been yet undescribed, but it's known for its incredible coloration. All the front pedipalps have this incredible electric blue, and just under good lighting, you'll see that. It's not like it's going to need a flash or anything specific. It'll show that, that beautiful coloration. Now, this one came from a man directly like this in this container and it's all housed, it's ready to go. I'm just gonna open it up, we're just gonna check it, see if we can take some short little video of it uh, without disturbing it too much, just because of the stress of the journey and the fact of getting here. And then we're gonna wanna try and find a way down the road. We'll do another video of setting up this beautiful female in her own beautiful enclosure. This is a true fossorial species. This species here is, uh, it's, it's not as large. This is a, is a full-size female. She might get a little bit bigger. It's going to generally be about a six-inch leg span versus that Doria is a monster. It can get up to eight inches. That's why I said it wasn't really fully, fully mature in size. This one's perfect in our temperatures. This species is definitely not a group that you would want to have for beginners. This particular female has an incredible pedigree. She was out of the first homegrown sack by Tarkan, which was fathered by an Anmac raised male. There you go. So you see the defensiveness, and you also see that brilliant, brilliant blue coloration in the legs. So yeah, she doesn't want to be disturbed. And the thing that's really, really cool, I don't know if you can see it from the angle you're looking at her at, but I'm looking down at her right now, and her eyes look back to be glowing back at me as if they're almost made out of silver. Uh, just the telithere being that neat color. Oh, she is stunning. This is one that I've been wanting to pick up slings for a while. 
uh, to be able to grow up. But when the chance came along for getting a full adult female of it, a show specimen, I was right on it right away. All right, my friends. Well, thank you kindly for watching. I'm going to put these two beautiful spicy girls away on the rack, and we'll see you next time in the next video. Take care.